In the previous videos, I established the basis for us to define a neural network, which are basically functions that allows us to go from the some input to some output in the form of wx plus b. Um, I'm going to go back to that just to for you to remember. Yeah, so this type of functions. And then we have a way to find the best B and the best W for the images we have or for the training images we have. So learn in this process, machine learning, is basically finding the best W and the best B so that the output, the outcome, is the best as possible according to the loss function that we choose. So how can we go from that to neural networks? Well, a neural network is composed of neurons. The most basic neuron is this type of neuron here, which is um, it is nowadays called a dense unit. You're going to see why it's called dense feature or fully connected unit. For this type of neuron, the input is several values organized in a vector, let's say an image or pixels of an image or features in general, and the output is a single value, a scalar. So the output is just one value. Could be, for example, the, a probability of a class and to be positive, a probability of an image to be to belong to um, positive class or a negative class, let's say. A positive class could be desert and negative beach or so on. Input, um, each input is associated with a weight W. That, in terms of neuron, defines the connection strength. We will note that this type of modeling is uh, bio-inspired. So the idea is that this mimics in some sense, our neurons that receive um, elect, um, electric impulses and then emit some other electric impulse by summing several impulses that uh, it received. So this idea is um, is copied here in this in this sense. So we have um, the pixels of the image. Each pixel is multiplied with a value, which is the connection strength or weight. We sum everything, uh, sum all the products, and then sum also a value B here, which is the bias. So, as you probably note, we can write that in the form of a matrix W times X plus B, right? So we can use a, a vector or a matrix. Um, uh, optimi uh, a matrix multiplication and sum instead of uh, a sum explicit sum here in this case, right? And learning again is to find Ws and Bs that fits the training data. Oh, and B works as an intercept or a shift of the version, right? And while W defines the scale, there is also on the top of that, on the top of the Wxb, wx plus b, we have a function f that's applied over that that transforms the output. And remember that in, in the example I gave you in the last, last uh, the previous video, we had scores as outputs. So the score of a turtle or a cat, for example. So, th but those values were um, were not very like we could not interpret them very well. So this is why we have activation functions for us to compress or to limit the output in some sense. One of the most used functions is the sigmoid function which will compress all the input values. In here I'm showing you from minus 10 to 10 but could be even larger this interval to uh, values from 0 to 1. And when I have it, an output that is being in between 0 and 1, I can interpret that as the probability. This is very nice, right? We can have 
a probability of a class, for example, as the output of an error. Or the hyperbolic tangent. The hyperbolic tangent is similar to the sigmoid, but it outputs from minus 1 to 1. It is useful for signals. And also, if I want to discriminate between negative and positive classes. So if it is a negative value, it's a negative class, positive value, positive class. For images, also, the rectified linear unit, or hello, is also used. It's a very simple function. It basically just um, clips all negative values to zero. So it will um, make it make all negative values null and keep all positive values. While leaky relu will um, multiply negative values with a very small fraction. So in this case, it's we take 10% of negatives and positives stay the same. So this is common for images. Often because images don't have negative values. So if the output is something, a negative pixel, I just will get rid of that. And then we perform, in order to train that images, I'm going to, uh, first, I, I forgot to mention, I'm going to make a topology of this network by composing several neurons. A single neuron uh, usually is not sufficient to solve more complex problems. It can solve a two-class problem, so if we interpret the output as, for example, minus 1 to 1, and then, or 0 to 1, and then take um, half of it to be the point in which we are doing the threshold between one class and the other. However, for example, for three classes, this is more difficult, so we have to have three neurons. We can also uh, go and then start building more and more neurons. This will make our um, model much more complex. How, how can I um, train that? We use the algorithm, uh, th those networks are often called feed-forward, your networks, and there is an algorithm that recursively apply the chain rule from calculus to compute weight adaptation for all parameters. What is called feed-forward is basically to input the data and compute the loss function by multiplying everything and then summing everything and do all the transformations until we have the final result, the output. And then we do what is called back propagation. This is the actual the chain rule that is applied in order to um, find the gradient for re with respect to the loss function. We are going to compute the gradient and then um, use that gradient in in the, in the kind of a graph structure to propagate this gradient through all layers or all neurons and then adapting all of them. So let's say we have this problem here, problem of digit classification. I have lots of images in a data set. Those images are images in which people um, write a digit in between 0 and 9. So those are handwritten digits. And I built a neural network with a single layer. Because I have 10 classes here, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, I must have 10 neurons. So the first neuron that is um, represented by this square here is will, will output the probability of the input image to belong to the class 0. The second neuron, which is um, represented 1 here, will compute the probability of that image to belong to the class 1, and so on and so forth. Note that inside here, what we have is w, x plus b, the same function that we already have. What we want to do, x is fixed, x is the image, but w changes. For every neuron, I have a set or a vector w. It is transposed here in order to produce a, a single value. 
and B is the bias term. So we have a single scalar here, and this scalar is transformed by the softmax activation function. I didn't mention that function in the in the previous uh, slide, but the softmax is a fancy name for uh, a normalization that is done. This uh, is not actually an activation function per se because it uses not only the value of that neuron but all of them. So a softmax means that we get all values, all output values, so 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9 in the form of a vector and then we divide them by the sum. When we divide something by the sum of all values, what that means is that they sum up to 1. So by when we have this output here and the output sums to 1, we can interpret that as a probability vector or a probability distribution. So that is why we apply softmax. So when we hear about, oh, I applied, I used a softmax classifier. Okay, and then you can think, hmm, what this guy did is basically get the, the vector and divided every element of the of the vector by the sum, and that's it. So basically, it's a fancy name for a very simple approach. So in practice, if you want to implement that using Python or C or anything, how can we do that? Well, you're going to have we depend on some some values, right? So. Um, this slide was supposed to have an animation, so we don't have this. So just take a look at the first uh, statement here. If we have 10 classes, which is the case of the, our problem here, of digits classification, if we use a batch size of 32, remember that we are using the SGD algorithm, so we select 32 images from the um, all images that we have to train. And the images have um, the image has 28 by 28 pixels. So if we multiply 28 by 28, the result is 784. So a total of 724 pixels. So let us uh, wrap this up. So 10 classes, 32 images on the batch, and every image has. 784. This means that the input is now a matrix, not a single vector. Why is it a matrix? It's because we have many images, or a batch of images. Every row of that matrix is an image. Which pixels? 0, 1, 2, 2, 783, because I started with 0, right? So we have, in this first row, 784 pixels the second row the second image and so on until we reach the last image of the batch so we have all images of the batch here codified in one matrix we multiply that with the vec the the um, weight matrix the weight matrix has rows that are associated with the input size so the number of the, the dimensionality of the, the the inputs in this case is 784 pixels and then because we want to output probability values for every class we have 10 columns from class 0 to 1 to class 9 so note that this matrix w here is is not dependent on the batch size but it's, it is dependent on the number of pixels of the image and the number of classes that we have and the biases are values that are associated with the class with the output so we go back here and now we have how to implement that we have the input in this case I'm just inter, uh, representing one image as input but we know that we are working with a batch of images in fact then x plus uh, sorry uh, x times w plus b note that 
every unit here is associated with all pixels so every neuron will perform a transformation using all pixels this is why this type of neuron is called a dense neuron or a fully connected it's fully connected because every output uses all input to compute its values its um, its final outcome so this is called a dense layer or a fully connected layer of a neural network and what is the output so when we multiply the batch with w and some b we have this type of uh, formulation here x times x times w plus b we apply the softmax and then we have y actually is uh, y hat because it's, um, this is an estimate so we estimate the classes and then the output if we know a little bit of um, matrix multiplication you you realize that when we multiply something that has um, n by m with something that has um, n by c the output is n by c so number of images by the number of classes this means when we input each image in a, in a row image pixels in a row the output is each image probabilities for every class of the problem so this is the matrix that defines the probability distribution for every input image from class 1 to class 9 okay but we are talking about deep learning right so let us go deeper we can include more layers instead of going directly from the image to the output we can insert intermediate layers or hidden layers the role of those layers is to allow the transition between the image and the class to be smooth so we don't have to compute directly the class from the pixels we allow it to be kind of um, um, to have a space or a feature space we are learning feature spaces in this process instead of explicitly for example extracting texture or color features I'm letting the network learn those features by use dense dense layers in this case so here I just defined it three layers two in the intermediate ones each one will have its own W and B values and also its own activation function in here I um, I just note denoted s as the activation function in general and the last one have to be soft softmax in order to have um, a probability distribution interpretation so an illustration on how it works if I input some image let's say an image with a seven digit instead of having to directly compute what is this label or the, the class of this image I allow the first layer to be a combination so that it activates layers uh, or neurons differently in here I'm using the green color to denote the more saturated uh, the green value here is the highest is the value the larger the value is the output is so for white neurons here I just uh, interpret that those neurons are outputting zero as the uh, result this means that some neurons will specialize in, sp in specific features of the image so in this case we have like um, five neurons that were activated by using this image in the next one we also have other other layers in this case four activated neurons the other ones were zero that means those neurons are more specialized in the class 7 and finally just on the last layer that we want the class to be perfect in this case the perfect case would be to have the output 0 for the class 0 0 for the class 1 0 for the class 2 
0 for the class 3 and so on and 1 for class 7 only. This would be the perfect classification case. And then in this way we can then design uh, a network that has different layers or different number of layers so increase the depth of the, of the neural network and also increase the um, make it wider so um, the more neurons are used uh, the, the wider each layer will be how can we define that how can I know well how can I know how to design that we just know two things right what we know for sure is the input which is the size of the image we cannot usually we cannot change that or well, once we decide that it is fixed uh, it's the number of pixels the output is the number of classes mm, but the hidden layers are much more it's difficult to define but what we usually do for dense layers is to gradually decrease so let's say we have 784 pixels as input and 10 pixels as output we are going to use let's say 100 neurons here and then 50 neurons here and then 10 neurons at the end so we are gradually in decreasing the dimensionality of the representations